Hello, this is Susan Rice with the American Stroke Foundation, and I'm pleased to talk with you today about posture and positioning, which is an important topic for many individuals after a stroke. I will say, you've probably heard some of this information before, but it is always good to review such basic skills as sitting correctly and having good posture. So I hope you'll join me today. First, let's consider why posture is so very important. Take a moment to consider what posture might improve and reduce. One thing that proper posture improves is digestion. When we're sitting nice and tall, our body is able to move our food through the digestive system more effectively. Additionally, when we're in a good position and not hunched over, our lungs are able to expand fully. When we're slouched, our chest is compressed and our lungs can't expand fully. So when we raise up, sit tall or stand tall, open our chest up, we're able to take those deep, rejuvenating breaths that help oxygenate our body. Additionally, it can improve our circulation to have good posture. We're not pinching off any nerves or blood flow to our extremities. And finally, good posture improves the use of our muscles. Our muscles are in the proper alignment to be used effectively for reaching, leaning, and supporting our bodies. Additionally, proper posture can reduce aches and pains. I'm sure we're all familiar with the aching neck that comes from sitting with a crick in it. Additionally, we may have all felt the low back pain or even shoulder pain that comes with sitting poorly. As alluded to before, proper posture, when we're sitting correctly, this can help reduce indigestion. And finally, proper posture reduces the chance of aspiration of food and water, which can be a particular concern for some individuals after a stroke. Now that we know why it's important, let's consider some ways to remember our proper posture. My first piece of advice is to stack your spine. Our spine is made of many vertebrae that have a natural S-curve to them, but when we're hunched and slumped and twisted, they're no longer stacked one on top of another. So this is your reminder to sit up straight, stack the vertebrae of your spine one on top of the other. When you're doing this correctly, your head will be over your shoulders and they will be over your hips when you're sitting. And when you're standing, they will also be in line with your knees and feet. Take a moment to check your posture now. Are you stacking your spine? The second tip is called 90-90-90. This is because our ideal posture places our hips at a 90 degree angle between our trunk and thigh, our knees at a 90 degree angle between our thighs and shins, and our ankles at a 90 degree angle between our shins and feet. This provides a good base of support and reduces the strain on muscles because gravity is working in your favor. Tip number three is to plant your feet. Create a steady base to keep your posture by planting both feet flat on the floor. So we know why we need proper posture and what it looks like when we're sitting, but how do we get from standing to sitting down? 
How can we sit down safely? Step number one is always to find a good chair. Check the chair options around you for their height, whether or not they have armrests, and whether they're positioned where you want to be in the room. Always cho choose a sturdy chair without wheels. The last thing we want is your chair rolling out from under you. Next, make sure you feel your knees on the seat behind you. Be sure the chair is securely behind both knees before your descent. This means that your chair is not too far back or too far to either side of you. You know that you're squarely in front of it if both knees are touching. Once you're in position, reach back with your hands and use them to guide you into the chair preferably supporting with the armrests if they're available and if there aren't any around, reaching backward to feel the seat behind you. And finally, one important step is to lean forward and control your descent. We don't want any plopping, right? That's where accidents can happen. Even when we're lined up best, if we lower ourselves without control, we're putting ourselves at risk. So lean, don't plop. Then once we're sitting safely, how do we come back to standing? We start with having our feet under our body. This creates a firm base of support to help us get onto our feet. Next, be sure to use the arms of the chair to push yourself to standing. If armrests are not available, you can push off from the seat or from a secure table next to you. Third, as you begin to stand, you'll employ what we call nose over toes. Easy to remember, right? It simply means leaning forward until our nose is above our feet, our toes. This allows us to control our movements and as we rotate our pelvis forward with that lean, that will help us use our momentum to stand and get our muscles in the proper position to contract and give us maximal strength. Finally, what if you're someone who uses a walker or cane? Well, I do want you to have them nearby and waiting, but please do not use them to lift out of a chair. It can be tempting to reach forward onto the arms of a walker or to hold on to your cane and use them to help lift you, but the risk is that it will tip back on you and lead to a tumble. It is much better to use the arms of your chair to help you rise. I hope this has been a pleasant review of proper positioning and how to sit down and stand up safely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.